friends, Monica here and welcome to my channel and thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super trendy boho cape with the fun fringe on the bottom. This is going to be a super simple project to make and the version I'm wearing I used a sewing machine to make but I'm actually going to be telling you how to make a similar version without a sewing machine too. That way if you don't have a machine you'll still be able to make a really cool cape anyway. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and if you do please give it a thumbs up and I would love to have you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and get sewing. To make this cape, I used about one and two thirds yards of a fleece fabric, although you may use less if you're making a smaller cape. You'll also need a closure for the front of the cape, and the one I used is called a frog closure, which was very easy to sew on. And finally, I used a package of half inch wide double fold bias tape, although if you don't have a sewing machine and you still want to make this project, you can skip the bias tape. And I'll have all the items and sewing supplies I use listed and linked in the description below the video in case you want a list of everything that I used. The cape is made from a large square of fabric. Mine is about 58 inches long by 58 inches wide, which I found to be a really great size for that cozy blanket-like feel. But if you are more petite and this size winds up being too big for you, it is really easy to trim down after you try it on. So no worries if you do cut it a little too big at first. Start by folding your square in half and smooth out the fabric so that there are no wrinkles. Then fold it in half again the opposite way and again smooth it out so that now you should have four layers of fabric folded up into a smaller square like this. Go to the corner where both of the folded edges meet because we'll be cutting out a circle here to make the neck hole. To get a perfectly even circle, measure from that folded corner and make a mark two and a half inches away from the corner. Then swivel the tape measure down slightly and make another mark two and a half inches away. Continue doing this until you've created a quarter circle shape. Then connect the marks with a curve and cut along that line. When you unfold the square completely, you'll have a perfect circle in the center for the neck hole, but we also need to cut a slit down the center so that we can actually wrap the cape around us. To do this, cut a straight line through the middle of the square, starting at the center of the circle and ending at the bottom of the square, just like this. At this point, you can wrap it around you to see if you like the size, and if needed, you can trim it down some along the sides or along the bottom edges. Basically, if it feels like you're wearing a blanket, you're on the right track. Next up, we have to trim the neckline into more of a curved shape so that it lays more smoothly rather than jutting out into a point like it does now. Grab your chalk and sketch out a gentle curved line starting from the neck hole and ending at the front opening just like I'm doing here, and this will give us a general guide of where to trim it so that it lays nicely. Your line doesn't have to be perfect by any means, it's just a general guideline. Take it to your table and cut along that line starting at the edge of the circle and ending at the front opening so that you'll have a gentle curve that blends together without any harsh edges. To cut the other side so that it's exactly the same, flip that piece of fabric you just cut off over and pin it down so that you can use it as a guide to cut the neckline on that side too and then they'll both be perfectly symmetric. And as you can see, the neckline lays much more smoothly now. We'll be adding bias tape around the front neckline next just to give it a nice detail, but if you don't have a sewing machine, you can skip this step and leave the edges as they are because we're using fleece fabric that doesn't fray. If you do skip the bias tape, make sure your edges are cut perfectly smoothly and make sure none of your markings are showing, and then you can skip the next few steps and join us when we cut the fringe. To add the bias tape, lay your cape out so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up, and I'm going to zoom in on this bottom section first so that you can see it more clearly. And even though I'm using black bias tape on mine, I'm going to demonstrate the first part of adding it with orange bias tape just so you can see the details better because darker colors can be harder to film. 
As you can see here, the top side of the bias tape is a little bit shorter than the bottom side, so with that shorter side facing up, lay it near the front opening of your cape, leaving about an inch hanging past the cape's bottom edge. Unfold it once so that the shorter side is now closest to the opening of the cape, then unfold that shorter side one more time and line it up along the edge of the cape like so, and pin it down. Line up the next couple inches of bias tape along the opening and pin it down too, and as you continue doing this, make sure that each section of bias tape is completely smooth before you pin it down so that it all lays flat. And I've switched to the black bias tape here now that I've shown you the up-close detail. When you start getting into the curved portion, take extra care to really smooth out that bias tape so that it lines up around the curves without any gaps or puckers. It really helps to take your time and work it around those curves, especially when you get to the extra curved part at the back of the neck. I personally like to smooth out just an inch or two at a time and then pin it down often because it helps me to have it all pinned down when I go to sew it, and then I can smooth out those bumpy sections even more as I'm sewing so that there won't be any puckers on the final cape. When you finish pinning around those curves, line up and pin the rest of the bias tape down the opposite side, and again leave about an inch hanging past the bottom edge. Sew all the way around the opening to attach the bias tape, sewing right next to the fold that's closest to the edge of the cape. Use a straight stitch and always backstitch at the beginning and end of your seams to secure the stitches, and make sure to remove the pins as you go so you don't break a needle. When you get to the curved part at the back of the neck, take your time as you sew and double check to make sure you don't have any puckers in the tape as you sew it down, and you can smooth out each section more as you go so that you do get a nice neat seam. When you finish sewing it down, backstitch to secure the seams, and now the bias tape is attached to the back side of the cape. Flip the cape over so that the front is now showing and bring the bias tape around to the front, folding it over so that it covers up the stitches you just sewed. The edge of the cape will now be sandwiched between the bias tape and the bias tape will create a really nice border around the neckline. Take it to the ironing board and iron the bias tape down so that it stays folded in place and take some extra time to iron around the curves, which will help ensure that it all lays smoothly and neatly. Now to secure the bias tape to the front, sew along the edge all the way around the opening, sewing about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge on the right, just like I'm doing here. I personally like to use a thread color that matches the bias tape for this so that it blends in just in case I make a mistake, that way it all looks super clean. When you finish sewing, iron it one more time for neatness, and this is what you should have so far. To finish the edges of the bias tape that are hanging below the cape, lay it so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up. Fold the end of the bias tape up about a half inch, then fold it up one more time another half inch so that it's lined up with the edge of the cape, and sew it into place, and repeat this on both sides. Next, we'll be cutting fringe along the top and bottom of the square, and to do this you'll need to lay the cape with the wrong side facing up. Grab your chalk and use a ruler or any straight edge to draw a line 4 inches up from the bottom of the cape, and this will give us a guide to cut the fringe evenly. Then use a sharp pair of scissors and get to cutting! Cut the fringe a little less than a quarter inch apart so that they're not so thin that they don't have any stability, but they're not so thick that they look chunky, and cut right up to the line you drew in chalk so that you keep it perfectly even. Cut all the way across until you get about a quarter inch away from the bias tape, and then head to the other side of the cape. Again, draw a line in chalk four inches up from the bottom to use as a guide and cut the fringe on that side as well. Then head up to the top of your square, draw another guideline, and cut your fringe there as well. And I know it can be tiring on the hands, so make sure to take a break or two if you need to.
When you finish cutting, this is what your cape will look like, and you'll want to try it on to see where you want the closure to sit. I placed mine right where the two necklines meet. Then pin it into place and set the cape back onto your table so we can sew the closure on. Separate the two sides of the closure so that we can sew one side on at a time, and then thread a needle with a double strand of thread and knot the thread at the end. For this type of closure, we'll be hand sewing around each of these three loops and then leaving the knotted section unsewn because that's what's used to secure the closure. Remove the straight pin and feed the needle up from the back of the cape through the center of the closure and make a small stitch in the center to tack the closure in place. Then start sewing around one of the loops by sewing up and down all the way around that loop so that it's completely secure. When that section is sewn, move on to the next loop and sew it down too. And finally, sew the third loop on as well, again making sure to leave the knotted section unsewn. When you finish sewing, flip it over and knot the thread on the back to secure it. To do this, I like to feed my needle through one of the existing stitches and pull the thread partway through so that it forms a small loop, and then I'll feed the needle through that loop a couple of times before I pull it all the way tight. As you can see, this forms a small knot, and I'll do this a couple of times to make sure that it's knotted good. Then trim the thread so there's just a little bit left, and one side of the closure is attached. To sew the opposite side on, again remove the straight pin and sew around these three loops exactly like you did before, but this time you'll leave the loop on the end open so that we'll be able to wrap it around the knot to close the cape. When you get that side sewn on, you'll now have a working closure and your project is all done so you can be super cozy this winter. Thank you for watching and happy sewing. Caw, caw. I feel like a bird. <laughs>